everyone. This is Colleen with Yarnwars.com. Today, I bring you another Power Hour project. Um, this project I am calling Spritz Cookie Dishcloth Pattern. And I'm calling it this because these to me look like from the cookie press, as many of you will know. Um, they look like little spritz cookies to me. And, you know, I can't explain to you how I come up with or why I come up with some of the names for patterns I come up with. Um, I look at something and something pops out. And that's what it ends up being. So I know it's a strange, strange name for it, but that's what it is. So the spritz cookie dishcloth pattern. And you can really see this um, a lot better, the pattern itself on a straight color. Um, this is a cotton blend that I got from a local store. I couldn't tell you what the name of it is, um, but it's really nice. Um, it's a thicker yarn, a thicker weight. Um, this one is, um, I love this cotton by Hobby Lobby. Um, it is, my apologies. Yes, I love this cotton. Um, and it is color number 338, pink, teal, orange. And uh, it's just a cotton, 100% cotton. This one suggests we use a 5.5 millimeter hook with this, but we will be using, um, or I will be using today um, a J hook and I'm actually not even going to be using this but I really like how this turned out with these colors beautiful um, and I really like the flimsiness of it it reminds me of a knitted dishcloth one of the reasons those are my favorite dishcloths to work up and to have in my house I love the knitted ones because they're just so much more um, I just, they're, once you wash them, they still come back just the way they were when you made them, I feel. Um, this one I did a border on. <clears throat> I don't normally border mine, um, my dishcloths, but I wanted to try it out. And this one is the same thing without a border. So for this, I used a chain, a starting foundation chain of 21. You can work this pattern in multiples of uh, four. So if you're wanting to make a scarf, a blanket, um, a dishcloth, face, face cloth, spa cloth, whatever you call it, um, whatever you want to make, if you just remember that you want to use multiples of four plus one for your foundation chain to start. Um, and again, this is 21 starting and it, <clears throat> real quickly, I'll pull out my broken measuring tape and see, but it measures out to about six inches. And for me, I just really, I like this size. This size is great. So, um, but you can make it any size you want. You can make it larger, you can make it smaller. Today's project um, or tutorial, I will work up with a starting chain of 17. So four multiples of four plus one, um, which will give us 17 total. So let's get started on this. Today you're going to want your yarn. Um, I just have a, a, I don't know what this is. I am so sorry, my friends. I have no idea what this is. Um, it's soft and I love working with it. Um, I bought a bunch of it and I don't know why I don't have wraps for it, but um, I made a lot of dishcloths with this color just because it is a softer cotton. Now you can use any cotton. You can use sugar and cream, peaches and cream. Um, you can use whatever you have. I just like working with a softer cotton because it gives me a less stiff project and it's just more enjoyable to work with all around. So we're going to start by um, using uh, cotton. I'm sorry. Again, I will be using a J hook. That's a six millimeter hook. And I know that the lighting is probably not the best today and I'm sorry for that. You're gonna want your scissors. You're gonna want a blunt needle. 
to help you hide in a couple of tails at the end, of course. So we're gonna start with our slip knot. We are going to cross over and put our working yarn at the back of that loop right there. You can just pull that through with your fingers or with your hook, it doesn't matter. Um, and put your hook through there if you pull it through your fingers, with your fingers, and pull on it. Give it a little tug to your hook and you are all set. Like I said, we're gonna start with a chain of 17. Now you can work into um, directly into the stitches. On the foundation chains, I actually prefer to work in the back spine of this. You'll notice there are little bumps on the back. And these bumps are perfect to work into because it gives you a really nice finish. Your bottom of your project is gonna look like this, like the top of your project will at the end so um, you can do it either way but just remember to try to keep everything relaxed you're going to go into the second chain either the second chain if you're working into your chains from the hook or you're going to go into that second bump in the back and you're going to work a single crochet for beginners a single crochet you're going to just go into your stitch yarn over and pull through and then you'll yarn over and pull through both loops on that hook or on both loops yeah on your hook sorry oh we're going to go into each of our chains down this row with a single crochet so this is going to be a real simple um, just kind of building onto that foundation to give us a little more of a sturdy project to start with so we start with our row of single crochets. So just go down, work a single crochet into each of your chains in your foundation. I don't work a lot with single crochets, so this has been kind of a change for me with this pattern. But you are going to find that this pattern works up so fast. So if you're looking for a nice gift set of dishcloths or like I said, spa cloths, whatever, um, or even if you're looking to make a scarf for someone as a gift, this project is so fast. It's nice. Or if you need some extra, um, you need some fillers for your craft show. Now the foundation chain is always the most awkward row to work so once you get through this part it's a little less annoying so we're single crocheting all the way down into each and we will end our project our row this way you will see that the bottom, rather than having just one single loop down at the bottom, you're gonna have like a full set of stitches, just the way it should look, in my opinion. So now we have ended with 16 stitches because we skipped that first one to make our beginning stitch. That's where that plus one comes in. So now what you're gonna do is chain one Turn your work, and we're going to work into this first stitch right here. Was The first stitch is going to be a single crochet. So in our pattern, your first and last stitch will always be a single crochet. And that helps to just really kind of level things off and give us a more straight edge in the end. 
So next what we're going to do is we're going to work over these next two stitches. We're going to go directly into the next stitch and we're going to yarn over and pull a loop through. So we have two loops on our hook. Then we're going directly into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, you'll have three loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops on our hook, and chain one. Now do a nice relaxed chain one and you will understand this why in the next row. So we're going to do this again and continue doing this down the row. Um, I hope this isn't too dark. I'm sorry if it is. We're going to go in, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Yarn or go into your next stitch, yarn over, pull up another loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops and chain one. Continue doing this down until you only have one stitch left on this row. As with any project, the further up the project you go, the more stable your working space is with your project and you will just fly through it. First couple rows always seem to be the, like I said, the most awkward stages to work where you really have to watch where your hook is and all of that. So we're going to go in and make one more of these. We've got three, if you can see that, we've got three stitches left, one, two, and three. And we are going, or I'm sorry, yeah, one, two, and three. We're going to go into this next one, make the same stitch again, pulling up mm -hmm. three loops, yarn over, pull through all three, chain one, and then we'll go ahead and work a single crochet into that last stitch right there. We end this row looking like this. Not real pretty yet, huh? Okay, that's all right. We're going to get a very pretty pattern here in a moment. So we're going to chain one, turn our work, and again, we'll work a single crochet into that first stitch there. Now, this is where I'm telling you that you want to do a relaxed chain one. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Um... You want to do a relaxed chain one because your first chain one on this is going to be visible from this side. It kind of turns downward. So we're going to be going into this chain one. You're going to have to make sure to get under there so that you get both loops of that stitch, yarn over, pull through, and chain, or I mean uh, make a single crochet. And then we're going to work into our next stitch, another single crochet. We're going to single crochet down this whole row again. So you're going to see this little diagonal piece again. Remember that is a stitch. So it, the more relaxed you were with making it, the easier of a time you're going to have getting in there and grabbing that. But you're going to just work a single crochet into each stitch down to the end. And again, you will end this row with a total of 16 stitches. And again, once you get through a couple rows of this, you're going to have an easier time, even with those um, awkward stitches that you have to go into. Just make sure you've got both of the loops in there from that stitch. single crochet all the way down to the end and you'll get to your last stitch and you'll be able to see it with that little starting or start to your chain there and you're gonna just work a single crochet still not a 
the most desirable looking pattern, but that's okay. We're getting there. Chain one. Now that we have, and this will be our pattern from here on out, guys. This is how simple this pattern is. Um, we'll work a row of single crochets in between each of our two together plus a chain one. So we start again every row with a single crochet. And then we will go directly into this next stitch here. Yarn over and draw a loop through that stitch. Go into the next stitch, draw another loop up. Yarn over, pull through all three, and chain one. Do this again. All the way down till you get to one stitch remaining. Just be relaxed with everything. Keep reminding yourself. If you see yourself start stiffening up with things, remember, this is supposed to be a stress-free sport, right? Um, okay, so we're gonna go in to our last, we have one stitch left, we go into that last one with a single crochet. So it is as simple as this. We're working single crochets for our next round, so we'll just chain one, turn our work, and single crochet down, even into those awkward chains. We're gonna just single crochet all the way down. You can make a couple of these, if not more, within an hour. It's that easy, and it's that quick, and I know things are, are looking a little are like looking like they're slowing me down a little bit, but the only thing slowing me down with this project is a camera. So, um, I'm just going down. Oh, and see, there's a good example. I just accidentally grabbed one of the loops of that stitch. I need both of those. So I need to grab that. I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so all the way down to the end with our single crochets and then a chain one. And then we are going to repeat the next row where we're gonna work a single crochet into our first and then two together plus chain one. So in, drop a loop, in, drop a loop, chain or pull through all three loops and chain one. Go in, drop a loop. In, drop a loop. Yarn over, pull through, and chain one. So in, drop a loop. In the next, drop a loop. Yarn over, pull through all three loops, and chain one. All the way down, guys. This is as difficult as it gets. And in no time, you have a beautiful dishcloth. They really do work up nice. In the end, when you can get this all together and all your stitches come together, you're really going to have a nice piece. So don't look at it and be, you know, turned off right away. Wait until you've created one because it takes no time at all. And it's a nice little side project, you know, put away those whips for a few and pull out a different project just so you can start working up something to give yourself a break because this really just it flows so quickly and you will have this done in no time so anyhow I'm going to go off camera here you go ahead and grow this to the length you desire um, I'm going to finish up with this one um, and I may or may not edge it off I don't know if I will put a border on it or not 
but um, I will finish up with you when I return. So continue doing what you're doing. If you need to go back just to kind of review notes a little bit, look down in the description of the video. I have put the repeat rows there. They're just so simple though. You're gonna, you're gonna have this all figured out by that first round, no problem. So um, I will see you back here in a little bit and get back to yarning. See you soon. Hey, so I thought it'd be nice to just come in here and finish up this whole project with you. So um, what I mean by that is I'm gonna go ahead and work the last two rows so that you could one more time see the repeat on this. You probably already all have this down pat, but if any of you are struggling at all with it, I'm working again on my two together plus chain one row. So we're gonna, at the end of our single crochet row, we're gonna chain one. And work a single crochet into that first stitch right there, as we will for every row. And then we're coming into those two, next two stitches right there. We're gonna go in, yarn over, pull up one loop, in, yarn over, pull through all three. So we're just working those two together with a chain one, and we're doing that all the way down this row. Oh, well, and once you get it, it's something you'll be doing a lot of, I have a feeling. Because it just flows so nicely, and I really love how all of this pattern worked up. So I hope you did too. I hope you enjoyed doing this. Um, so I'm going to just do a couple of things while I'm closing up here with this pattern. Um, I'm going to just mention a couple of places for you to visit. If you, first of all, if you enjoyed this pattern chain one and single crochet into that last stitch. If you enjoyed this pattern um, or any of my other patterns, I hope that you have or will subscribe to my channel um, so that you can be alerted when I put up a new power hour project or a new pattern, chain one and turn your work, single crochet into that first stitch and to every stitch after. You wanna end this pattern with a row of single crochets just like we started it. Uh, I was not loose or careful with my chain ones on that last one. Um, so I would love for you to come and see us over on our Facebook group. You can uh, find um, our Facebook group, our webpage, uh, you can find all of that in the description of this video. Just look down below and um, you will get all the information for all of our social medias. Uh, Facebook group, we have such a great group over there. Um, wonderful people who are very helpful to others. Um, it's nice to be able to kind of go and show what you've been doing, what you've been working on, get support or give support to other people. And it's a great place for that. Make friends from all around the world with um, your yarn craft. So anyhow, we finished this. Um, when I'm done, I will either go ahead and work a border or I won't. And um, I could show you how to do a border on this. Um, maybe I will do that, but I wanna go ahead and, you know, for those who are not interested in a border, um, just go ahead and finish up with you first. But you can kinda get that, you can see how that gives that little spritz cookie look. All right, so again, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I will have new patterns coming out shortly free patterns as always. Um, this is going up possibly before the printed pattern or the printable pattern. Um, so if you would prefer to work this up with a written pattern, you can either get the repeat rows down in the description below, like I mentioned, 
or um, you can also look in the description to find the written pattern for this. Um, sometimes my written pattern doesn't always get posted right away from this. I try to do it all together, but sometimes just because of time, um, it happens at different times. So um, I will definitely have it posted if it's available. And um, again, come and visit us over on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this pattern. It was a fun one to make. And now I'm gonna go ahead and close up for those of you who want to stay and make a border for this. We'll go ahead and do that right now. Hey, so for those of you interested in making a border to your dishcloth, um, this is actually really simple. Um, this is where we ended off. And I just want to show you again, this is the finish to our project here, our dishcloth. And on the opposite side, you can also see that we now have that same look on the bottom. And that is quite different from when you work in directly into chains of your foundation uh, down when you very your very start of it. Um, a lot of people work right into the chains, and that leaves you with one loop along the bottom, not like you see here with the full actual stitches right there. So um, it kind of just all around gives you a nice finish to that. But now if you are wanting to make a border to this, um, once you get to the end of your row, you just want to chain one. And we're going to start right into the first little space we see there, which we'll call a stitch. And we're going to make a single crochet right into that. It's not real easy making your border along the sides of um, these projects, but this one is a little easier um, right now because I have a lighter weight yarn that I'm using, so you can really see those stitches stand out. So we're just gonna make a single crochet all the way down into each of those spaces that we see. So, get through that first <clears throat> and finish that side of it. We're just literally going into each of the holes that we see here to make this border. And as long as you're relaxed with your stitches, you're gonna be able to get that all in there nicely. And you can go around a couple times if you like after you're finished, if you'd like to extend this border out more. I'm not going to do that, but here we have our beginning tail. So when I get to the end up towards the corner here, I'm going to chain one again, and I'm gonna work right into that space again. And then I'm going down into each of the stitches. Now, the one thing about the foundation, even though it gives you that perfect foundation, if you're doing a border, you're gonna have to work to get into those stitches still because they're a little tighter being the foundation. So just remember that um, it's gonna be a little tighter on the bottom part of that on your foundation chain. get enough yarn to where I don't have to keep getting more yarn. And we'll just continue on around like this in this fashion into each stitch around making single crochets. There are different kinds of borders out there so you're welcome to venture out there and See if there's one that you like better, but this is just a real simple, basic border. Just remember when you get to the corners um, to kind of keep that straight cut look, uh, the corner look, to chain one. 
before you turn on to your next side. So we've gotten to the end of our second. We've bordered two sides and now we're going down the next side of this. We will chain one and go into our stitch, our first stitch. And just, you're going to just go down basically into every stitch that you see along the side. And for me, that's like every hole along the edge. So this has really been made easy for me because um, the edges of a project are not, or the sides of a project are not always the easiest to make a border on. Kind of have to just wing it. But I'm coming into the end. And that takes us up to the top where we already have a single crochet. So at the end, because we ended with a, cro a single crochet, I personally am going to end it here so that I don't have another row of single crochets. Um, or I could do another one. Because honestly, I did come along the bottom part here, which is a row of single crochets. So okay why not we'll go ahead and do that anyway we're gonna chain one go into our first stitch up here and then just every stitch across and this should finish us off so You'll actually have the top and bottom, which were already single crochets, but to get to each of the sides seamlessly, we had to cross along that bottom foundation. So, we get to the end of our project here. We've got this one stitch right here. We can go ahead and two and just do a slip stitch right there in that corner. And you can just um, edge or uh, do a slip knot there. I'm going to cut this here. I'll go ahead and pull that out. So for those of you who are new to crochet, um, sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hide in our tails. So we've got, this is our finished project here. Well, looks pretty nice, huh? It's a pretty pattern. It really is. Um, and for something so simple, it takes you no time at all to do. Go ahead and thread your needle. And you're just going to hide in your tails. Always go in the direction that the needle is going, or that the tail is going, where we left off. And you're just going to hide it in the best you can, kind of lock it into place, going back through stitches. <sighs> Sorry. It's not helpful unless I'm in the camera. So you're just going to go through a few times. And just until you feel comfortable that you've hidden in your tails enough. I'm going to stop right here on this.
And this one actually got hidden in a little bit as we were going there, so. Um, we'll go ahead and just come through a couple of stitches there. And I won't go crazy with this one. All right, so there we are. Such a nice, simple, quick and easy dishcloth. And it even has like the smaller weighted yarns that you're gonna use kind of have a little bit of a lacy effect to it. So it makes it even prettier, I think. Um, but I really do think you'll enjoy making it because you could sit there um, watch your favorite TV show and uh, knock off a couple of these in a very, very short period of time and fill up your kitchen in no time. Oh, I missed a loop up there. So that is the spritz cookie dishcloth. Let's see if I can fit that in somewhere. Um, this one I have not yet. I haven't steamed it or anything, so it's a little curled because of the thicker yarn that I used um, around the corner. I probably could have used or gone a couple more stitches on doing my edging. But like I said, normally I don't even do an edge on my dishcloths. I like to kind of just have a kind of a rough border, so I'm happy with that. But um, again, this is Colleen with Yarn Wars, and thank you so much. Yarnwars.com, thank you so much for joining me today for this Power Hour project. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will subscribe to this uh, channel for more fun, free patterns to come. Um, and do come over to our Facebook group and join in on the conversation. Like I said, so many different people, so many fun uh, friends from around the world. You'll make um, free patterns, a lot of free help over there. Support is amazing. Uh, best, best admins that uh, you'll find out there in all the Facebook book groups around. So um, I hope you'll join us and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today and I will see you again, my friends. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.